I am uh, Dr. Gautam Vankere from uh, My Lab Discovery. So what does this testing kit mean for India? But in purely in terms of the capacity to test our patients or our suspected patients, the country is huge. We need a large number of testing centers and we need, need a large number of tests. Now this is a global pandemic. Uh, so you can understand that countries across the world would have to uh, test millions and millions of patients and it's very important to not rely on imported manufacturers at such a stage because if the problem magnifies there's a there's a very good chance that company countries might just say we want to save these resources these tests or everything related to to COVID for ourselves um, so that's why it's very important to be self-reliant uh, in everything and especially when it comes to a pandemic like this, it's very important to not rely on imported uh, uh, anything imported and try to be completely indigenous in whatever solution we are offering. So how does this kit function uh, separately or similarly to the other kits? So one major difference that we saw or, or the, the way the tests were being carried out initially was that there was a screening of all suspected patients and if the screen was positive these uh, uh, these essays were further confirmed by using another gene to confirm the presence of covid 19. now this involved two important parts number one was the time time meant that first about two and a half three hours of the essay was uh, was just run purely for screening and if that person turned out to be positive the sample gave a positive result then a second essay was run to confirm for the presence of RDRP gene or the ORF1 gene uh, which resulted in an essay time of six to seven hours so obviously as I was saying one part was the patient waiting time and the other part is the the time to start the therapy the earlier you come to know that a person is positive the lesser time that person is spending maybe in the public or you know uh, with other contacts so you isolate him earlier and start the management earlier so that's the major difference of this kit versus you know the other kit uh, that were being imported into india uh, prior to uh, like march uh, 2020. so are the kits being shipped to the labs already yes uh, we're very proud to say that a large number of private and government labs are now using our kits uh, the the demand is still very high and we are trying to increase our capacity on a daily basis uh, I cannot you know be very comfortable or I cannot tell you the numbers but we've, we've shipped out a large number of kits over the last uh, five to six days we only got the license about 12 or I think 11 or 12 days back so since then labs across the country not only in a particular region I mean north south east west uh, we managed to send the kits everywhere a lot of labs have uh, got approval recently from ICMR uh, they validated the essays the, the ones that we supplied them and now they have already started testing or some others are just on the verge of starting to carry out the COVID-19 test on our kits you mentioned that the team at my lab began the process a couple of months ago Yes, that was a very important uh, aspect of this disease and also the team of my lab. So I think at the end of January, uh, WHO made the genome public, which also meant that researchers or manufacturers like us who wanted to target a particular, that particular strain of uh, COVID-19 uh, to detect and you know eventually manage the patients, it became comparatively easier for researchers and labs like us to then design a primer and probe once we designed the primer probe, we then started uh, validating it before we went into you know, test license and commercial production. So why did we start it? I think uh, something which was very important and uh, public was that China was facing a lot of problem. And eventually uh, the virus was spreading to Italy and all of us knew that over the period of next six to eight weeks, uh, the virus may go to US which eventually did and people were predicting all the epidemiologists uh, you know the people involved in the management of such diseases were, were very sure about this virus hitting India in the end of February March and more or less they were like right uh, so that's what happened and we followed the trajectory and uh, that's how we managed to uh, be uh, get ourselves ready in time so what were the unexpected 
challenges when we were making this particular kit. I think one of the biggest challenges that we had while making this kit was the lack of access to a real sample. Uh, we develop a large number of kits in our uh, in our, uh, our manufacturing facility. We have kits for HIV, HBV, HCV. Uh, we have the ID NAT kits, which are used in blood bank screening. So what we used to do is that whenever you, we used to develop an essay, we used to think it's good enough. We used to send out, send it out to a lab, and the lab just used to run the test parallelly with with the existing parameters. They were not using obviously that kit for any diagnostic purpose. But we, uh, based on the feedback that these labs were giving us, we knew that we were reaching a certain standard. Then we also had access to the WHO samples, you know, I'm talking about other assays. In this case, we had a synthetic RNA primer, basically, and based around that, we had to develop all the assays. We had to standardize, we had to do serial dilutions without actually having access to any single clinical sample. And that required a lot of precision because without the app, without you know any uh, large number of samples we tra targeting just one or two genes in one or two samples we had to get every combination perfectly right so as to be able to have a, a nice kit ready for the market so what are the challenges a large country like ours faces when we come across a pandemic like this so one major problem of a large country and a diverse country such as ours is the lack of uniformity of test. So in Delhi, for example, you might have a lab which is state of the art, which is best in the world. And just a couple of hours drive from Delhi, you might have a lab or a facility which is absolutely basic. What happens then is, what happens then is, you have to ensure that these kits or these tests are universally accessible. It cannot happen that only one group of patients has is having access to the test and the other one is not and that is the biggest challenge we as as manufacturers or we as whole as a country face is to, is to is to provide a test kit which can be used in a large number of cases which can be used to detect probably population from across the country and probably having a, an open kit such as this which can be run on any RT-PCR platform we have more than 4,000 to 5,000 RT-PCRs in India across various labs and that's where a kit like this helps because large number of labs can carry out the test and which also means that a large number of patients can be screened and detected with uh, this with this with this virus at the same time so thank you Thank you.